worship the most high God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll urge each and every one of us, if we can, let's be on our feet as we are about to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Bible says that our God is holy, and they that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. Amen. Amen. We bless your name, O God. Somebody lift your voice and give thanks unto the most high king. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We give it all to you, Jesus. We give it all to you, Lord. Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be your name, O King of Kings and Lord of God. We exalt you, we exalt you, we exalt you, we exalt you this morning. Somebody lift up your voice and worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father, we bless your name. 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 name.
shine. We love you, oh God. Blessed be the name of the Most High God. We are so to your everlasting God, Father. We are from the depth of our hearts. We say thank you, Jesus. We love you. Somebody shout hallelujah to the King of Kings. Amen. Beloved, it is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. So on behalf of the General of CI leadership, I would like to welcome all of us to this morning service. And a special welcome to our brethren watching us from New Boy Town. I would also like to say a happy Father's Day to our General of CI and all men in this ministry. Amen. Amen. It's now time for our first offering. So I ask that we cheerfully pick a quality offering acceptable unto the Lord. Kindly be upstanding if you have your offering. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing us safely to your house this morning. We thank you for your presence with us today. As we lift our offering, Lord, we give up give back a portion of what you have blessed us with. We pray that you accept it and multiply it for the furtherance of your gospel. Father Lord, we pray that you continue to bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Bye. 
every father in this church in all brands of FCC may God bless every father may you live long 150 years see your grandchildren carry your great grandchildren to the fifth and the sixth generations all to the honor and glory of God hallelujah praise the Lord this morning again my wife has to go to Teshi. Um, she started the sermon on the Lord your God last week and she has to finish it this Sunday. So she's there today. And she wishes you all her warmest greetings. And also wishing every father today is a Father's Day. May every day be indeed a Father's Day. Not just today, but may every day be a Father's Day. And mothers, yours, yours is, still, is here to come. And we shall even wish you a bigger Mother's Day, mothers. In the name of Jesus, clap your two hands for Jesus. Today we are having one service. As you know, we are having one service, not two. So when we close at 10 o'clock, that about 10 o'clock, then that is it. And any counseling, prayers, we do that here. Um, and then I'm informed that our, our brother, Elder Eric, has uh, thanksgiving or testimony to give. So we we'll, we'll allow him time at the end, toward the end of the service. Praise the Lord. Are you glad to be here this morning? Let's say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Say thank you, Father. I'm surprised that some churches are still closed. 
when when the president when the government closed down churches people were complaining now they say we can open and they are they are still closed so i don't understand i hear one church said that um there are thousands in the church they say oh 100 people there may not or some people say 100 name may not and I wonder why so 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 praise the Lord but church even five minutes in the presence of God can be all that you need is that not right How can I say? and if you have a thousands if you have thousands then have thousands have hundred hundred have it 24 hours a day church don't you agree with me if we had two thousand we will have a hundred seven a chance for hundred people 20 times so it will go on the night to the next morning would you agree with me i can say 100 is too small 100 is not too small god was looking for 10 in Sodom and gomorrah we say 100 100 is too small for you and one hour is too short for you may god have mercy on us church may god have mercy on us let us all pray father god we thank you for this morning we thank you especially for the message, the sermon, your word that the Lord will prepare for us today. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Lord, my prayer that all that receive it, that receive it in faith and believe in this, your word will work effectively in their lives to the honor and glory of your name. Thank you, Lord, for this morning again. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all be seated. From this morning, I, bring, I begin to bring you a message on faith, love, and hope. The title is Faith, Love, and Hope, Part 1. Today is Part 1, the first part. Because you have 20, I have just 20 minutes, I can't finish in 20 minutes. So, Faith, Love, and Hope. Today is Part 1. Faith love and hope first part and we take our text from the book of first thessalonians first thessalonians chapter one verses one and two by the way um last thursday we had this church completely fumigated by Zoom Lion. So the church is now sterile. So everybody here, once you enter this place, you are completely sterile. You are no longer infective. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 2 and 3. Let us hear the word of God. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father. Every time Paul remembered the Thessalonian church, the church in Thessalonica. Three things about the believers compelled him to make mention of them to God in his prayers. Thanking God always for them all. So Paul said, we give thanks to God always. Not some of the time, not sometimes, but always not sometimes but always for you all not for some of you but for you all this is something that is desirable for every church of God that the leader the pastor, the general here, or indeed every member of the church each time he or she prays will give thanks to God for that church for the church for them all not for some of them not for a few of them but for everyone in the church this is the ideal 
the ideal state that God will want every, every church to come to. In other words, we all who have come to the unity of the faith, believing in the, believing the name of Jesus, doing the same things, faith, love, and hope. So Paul, every time he opened his mouth to pray, he remembered the church in Thessalonica. And therefore he couldn't, he couldn't resist. He was compelled to always, not sometimes, but always pray for them all, not for some of them. Church, this is how every church must be. Now, whenever I go into my closet to pray, and I want to pray for the church, when I say church, I mean you, not the church building. Members in the church. A lot of times, I'm compelled to single out some people and pray for them or remember them. Because there are some that I find it hard even to remember. But I would like to pray for everyone. So after I pray for those who stand out and I pray for, Lord, bless your church. Bless for the rest. Bless the rest also. But it is my desire, the desire of God that each time the man of God is compelled, moved by the Spirit to pray for God's church, pray for them all, always. And why did Paul do this? For three reasons. For three reasons. And these three reasons he mentions in verse 2. He says, Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. Praise the Lord. These three things compared Paul to pray for the entire church in Thessalonica. That means that every member of that church exhibited or manifested these three things. Faith, love, and hope. Just say faith. Say love. And hope. The foundation of our faith rests on these three things. The pillar, the bedrock of our faith rests on these three things. And if you say or you claim to be born again, a believer, a Christian, a child of God, they're seen for heaven, then my brother and my sister, God expects you, like Paul, to exhibit, to show these three things in your life as a Christian. And if you listen to me from New Boy Town or watching us from any part of the world on, on social media, let it be known to you that once you claim to be a Christian, in other words, you are Christ-like, you are Christian, immediately you say you are born again, there must be the evidence, something to show that you are truly born again. The evidence must be there. And the three things you cannot afford to do away with, faith, love, and hope. Can I say faith again? Say love. Say hope. And clap your two hands for Jesus. Beloved, as I go into a little detail about these things, pay attention carefully. As I go into a little detail, about, I, don't, I, don't, I can't go into too much detail, but the little that we need to help us, please pay attention to these things carefully. Because even John the Baptist, way back in the days of John the Baptist, he said the same thing to those who listened to him, to the believers, or to his hearers. John the Baptist said the same thing in Luke chapter 3 verse 8. Luke chapter 3 verse 8. John said the same thing. More or less the same thing. By using different words. Luke 3 verse 8. John the Baptist said, 
Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. John the Baptist said these same things to his hearers, urging them, commanding them, begging them, pleading with them to bear fruits worthy of repentance, worthy of being born again, worthy of being a Christian. You must bear the fruit. And don't begin to say to yourself, I am a Christian. I go to church. I'm in the first century apostolic church. No, that is not enough. We are talking here about the works. Works. W-O-R-K. Works of faith. Not words. Not W-O-R-D. Words of faith. W-O-R-D are useless. Works of faith. W-O-R-K. Work. Works of faith are everything. Words, just saying it, is nothing. It's useless. So John said, therefore, bear, let's see the fruits of your repentance. And this goes to every Christian in the whole world. If you are watching me, I hear there is one called, called, called from Venezuela. Congratulations on, on, on the message on the Lord your God from Venezuela. So this message we know is reaching out to the whole world. Clap your two hands for Jesus. Works of repentance. For, because God is able, God is able to even raise children to Abraham from stones. So don't think that you are, you, you, you are indispensable. Don't think that, you know, uh, what, what we are standing, you can never fall. God efforts to bear that fruit of repentance. Clap your hand for Jesus again. When we talk about faith, faith always it means looking up. Just say looking up. Faith looks up. Hello? In other words, in faith, you are always conscious. You are always conscious of the Lord your God who is in heaven and in everywhere. Faith looks up. Remember there are four parts of faith. There are four faith can be broken down to four parts and you must have all the four parts. Faith in Jesus, faith in God through Jesus. Belief in Jesus, God gives you eternal life. Faith in Jesus, faith in God for eternal life. You must also exhibit faith for miracles. We all need miracles. We all need miracles. You must have faith for miracles. Number two. Number three. You must have faith to endure, to persevere, to go through, through afflictions, to go through hardship, to go through challenges. Otherwise, you fall away. You may have faith in Jesus, but if your faith is shallow, like the seed that fell on the rock, in time of temptation, you are not able to withstand temptation, you fall away. Church, God is looking at your faith to endure. Yes, we all, we've, we've, we've all been through it. There's no one called by God who will not be tested. God will test you. He will test you. You don't, you, you won't test you with mathematics. Not in physics, not in English. He will test your faith. And may you pass that test. May you all pass that test with distinction and with excellence. In the name of Jesus. I know how it is to go through barrenness. Barrenness. You, you, you get married and you, you're so happy. And then one year, two years, three years, no child. No child. You are married. You, you fulfilled all the requirements. No child. God is testing your faith. 
you have you may have been jobless for two years. You 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 qualified. You have, you have a certificate to get a job, but the job is not there. You have a, you've written a thousand applications. God is testing your faith. The job will come suddenly, and it is your faith that will have worked that job for you. Your faith will work that pregnancy and the children for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I went through five years of childlessness, my wife and I. And people were giving us all kinds of advice. Most of them were wrong advice. Worldly advice. But we looked up to God. Faith means looking up. We looked up to God. It took five years. Not five days. Not, not, not five months. Then God said, I will give you two, two children. And truly, God gave us a boy and a girl. May God pass, make you pass that test in the name of Jesus. And when you pass the test, God gives you a testimony. If, we, if my wife and I had 15 children by now, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be giving you this testimony. My testimony would be that I now have too many, too many children, I don't know what to do with them. That would be my testimony. That's no testimony at all. I don't even remember all their names. When I call one, I say, you, you, what, what's your name? Praise the Lord. You call your children and say, you come. What, what is your name again? God is testing you. Faith means looking up. Yes. In all situations, just say all situations. And at all, all times. Faith that we're talking about, without that, you cannot you cannot endure. You cannot go through. You cannot be a Christian. Because it trusts God. Faith trusts God to see us through and believes. Faith believes that no one is able to snatch us, take us away from the hand of God. That God, the Lord your God knows you and he's keeping you, preserving you, leading you. He knows that situation more than you know it. He knows the origin of it. He knows what, how it happened. And he knows the end. And he has a solution to that problem. Therefore, church, may you all look up to God in faith. Clap your two hands for Jesus. Jesus in the book of John. John's gospel chapter 10. John 10. Verses 27 to 30. John chapter 10. 27 to 30. Listen to this. John chapter 10, verse 27 to 30. Jesus said this. He said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. <laughs> I like that. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. Said, May God know you. May God always know you. And they follow me. They follow me. That is the that is the that, that is the qualification. They follow me. And I give them eternal life. Verse 28. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one is able to snap them out of my, of my father's hand. Not even coronavirus. I and my father are one. I and my father are one. Hallelujah. Jesus said, those who belong to him, those who, who manifest faith, show faith, fruit of repentance, he knows them. They, because they have heard his voice. Once you hear the voice of Jesus, you follow his commandments, you, you will bear fruits worthy of repentance. It, now he will know you. He will know you. And if Jesus knows you, and you are following him, and he's giving you eternal life, then you and I should not be afraid of coronavirus. Church, that virus has come to stay home. It is not going today, it's not going tomorrow. It has come to stay. Other, other ones have come. Leprosy came. Leprosy is still around. Influenza came. Ebola came. Many have come. 
this one too has come. Yes, we, we, that's what we are doing. We are changing our lifestyle so as to minimize the spread. But it has come to stay. But I know the coronavirus cannot snatch anyone from the hand of God. Praise the Lord. If Satan, the devil cannot snatch you out of God's hand, because we cannot see Satan. Can you see Satan visibly? Can you see demons with your naked eyes? Can you see any spirit with your naked eyes? Can you see the coronavirus with your naked eyes? If Satan cannot snatch you out of the hand of God, how can coronavirus do it? You shall live. You shall not die. Clap your two hands for Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians 10, 10, 13. The Bible says that no temptation in First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to endure it or to bear it. No challenge, no problem, no temptation, no affliction. Whoever comes to you which, has, which no, one has, no one has endured before. Others have endured it. They pass the test and God honored them. God bless them. It may be your turn. It may be your turn today. But God is giving you a testimony. Praise the Lord. God therefore knowing what you are going through always makes a way out for you. Don't make that way out for yourself. Rejecting God, refusing God, turning your back on God is not the way out. God will make a way out for you. Why there seems to be no way. He is able to make rivers flow in the wilderness. Hallelujah. He is able to turn the bitter waters of Mara to make them sweet in the name of Jesus. When Israel cried out for food, manna rained from heaven. Clap your hands for Jesus again, church. And when they asked for water, God gave them water out of a rock. So you and I, we have no problem. Just ask. Look up to God in faith. Look up to God in faith. Trust him and he will do it. Do the works of faith. Don't do the works that show that you have, you, have, you, have, you have lack of faith. Do the works of faith. Not just words of faith, but works. Work. Works. Work plus S of faith. Hallelujah. That is faith. And without this, then your, your Christianity is dead. Useless. Therefore, James says in James 2, James 2, Verses 14 to 20. James 2, 14 to 20. Hallelujah. <laughs> he says in James 2, verse 14, he says, What does it profit, my brethren? If someone says he has faith, but does not have works, can faith save him? The person says he has faith, but he doesn't have works to prove his faith. Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Depart in peace. How can you depart in peace? When he's naked and hungry. He said, depart in peace. That's also verse 17 that says, that's also faith by itself. If it does not have works, it's dead or useless. The word here, dead here means useless. But someone will say, you have faith. And I have works of faith. You have faith, but no works. But I have, I have works out of my faith. 
Show me your faith without your works. And I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? In that way, you know, you know something, church? This morning, take it with you. That saying is useless. It's worthless. Unless you back your words with action. Because the things you say, the demon can also say, the demons know there's one God. Demon can say, okay, I also believe in God. And when they say they tremble, you say it with joy. But they say it, they may say it, when they are hard pressed, they may say, okay, I believe in God, but they tremble. Therefore, you are saying that there's one God believing in God is useless unless you back it with faith. Works. Works of faith. Therefore, Paul said, I give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in my prayers. What did Paul remember the Thessalonian church? He's not just remembering, but he actually listed. He's not just bringing them to his mind, but remembering me that he actually told God why he was thanking him for the church in Thessalonica. One of the things he thanked God for was that their faith, their faith was steadfast. Their faith was visible. Everyone could see that they all had faith by their works of faith. Their works of faith. Faith for day-to-day living. Miracles, endurance, Jesus. Now, faith for day-to-day living. Every day, let your decisions Simple things that you do be controlled by faith. Nibor Town, I know you can hear me. As a believer, let your day to day activities, your day to day decisions be controlled, be dictated by faith. By faith. You don't do anything without looking up to God. God is looking at me. Jesus said, I know them. They hear my voice and they follow me. And I know them. So if Jesus is not looking at you, let your actions be based on faith. Not that be based on how you feel. Because you don't feel like doing it. You don't feel like going. You don't feel like obeying. But if you have faith, you do it. You go. You obey. And that is works of faith. Clap your two hands for Jesus. Beloved, I cannot overemphasize this. Next week we are going on to, to love. Faith, he said, looks up. And somebody is looking at you from heaven. Someone is looking at you from heaven. And you must look up to that person in heaven. Let that person know that everything you do is by faith. And that person is Jesus Christ. That person is God. He is the one who blessed you. He's the one who has the power to give you eternal life. No one else. He's the one that you and I must please. We must please him in every situation at all times. So that Paul said, I give thanks to God always for you all. Not for some of you, but for you all. Works of faith. Labor of love and patience of hope. Beloved, don't, don't relax. Don't, don't be lazy with these things. Don't forget these things. Don't be lazy with them. If you agree with me, clap your two hands for Jesus. Amen. Father God, thank you for this message. Indeed, Lord, we must have faith in you through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know us. That we may hear your voice and follow you. For you have given us eternal life. And no one, no one can snatch us out of your hand. Let this word fall on good soil. 
in the life of all who have heard it today or thereafter on social media. Let it bring forth fruits, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, or at least thirtyfold. Thank you, Lord, for your word again in Jesus' name. Amen. Just say a big amen. Let your na fit. Miti asia, miti ma o se mi suwa mi u ma o. Congregation, the people of God, and confess Christ as God and ask Him to forgive you your things, your sins. You believe with the heart, but you confess with your mouth. Believe with your heart, but you have to confess. So if you are here today and you want to make a confession, you want to give your life to Jesus, just lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Anybody here today? Check clap for Jesus. 
if it's been your birthday from Monday to today, your birthday, that your birth date or your birthday fell on one of these days from Monday to today, please come forward. Birthday. Birthdays. Oh, thank you, Lord. Birthdays. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can I see your face for a second? Because we are now we all look the same. God bless you. We all look we all look the same. My daughter, what's your date of birth? 17th June. That was four days ago. 17th June. Stretch out your hands in front of you. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of your daughter. She has come before your altar in your holy sanctuary with thanksgiving in her heart. She has come to adore you and to, to, to praise you. For Lord, she knows that you brought her to this life. And you have been the keeper of her life to now and beyond. In fact, her days are numbered before you. Knowing that she will grow to a good old age, full of years, to see her descendants to the fourth and even the fifth generations. The Lord, we all say thank you, Lord. Father, we say a big thank you through our Lord Jesus Christ for her. Continue to be with her, therefore, Lord. You know her. She follows you. Let no one be able to snatch her out of your hand. Let your blessings follow her. Let your blessings overtake her. Surround her by your angels day and night. Empower her. Lead her by your divine direction. Make her an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Holy Ghost. Thank you for hearing this our prayer, for blessing your daughter according to this prayer in Jesus' name. Just say a big amen. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. Now, today, if you brought your tithe with you, just stand up where you are. If you brought your tithe with you today, take your tithe envelope and stand where you are. in the name of Jesus. We pray and bless these envelopes. Lord, your children have brought to you a tenth, a tithe of what you have given to them. Just like Jacob did. He said, and of all that you give me, I will give a tenth, a tithe to you. They do so by faith. Looking up to you as their Lord and their God. My Lord and my God. They are doing something because they follow you and they hear your voice. Lord, you know them. Bless them therefore. Lord, bless them exceedingly abundantly. Bless especially the work of their hands. Now, what are they put their hand out to do, Lord, you shall prosper it. At the same time, rebuking the devourer because of them. No one can devour out of their hand. 
Holy Ghost, let prosperity be their portion. Let increase be their portion. Expansion and extension, Lord. Let them begin to see true elevation, true promotion. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may bring your tithe. Can we have some options here? Up in there, stand here. Stand here. No, you stand here. Wait here. Put the envelope in. Then stand there. Jesus' name, take that. Take it, son. Take it. Son, in the, are you, you paid your tithe today? Okay. In the name of Jesus, daughter, look at me. Take the fire. Take it. In the name of Jesus, may this blessing, this anointing, this power, manifest in your life and put laughter in your mouth. Laughter. Laughter, uncontrollable laughter in your mouth and in your dwelling place. Son, in Jesus' name, take. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Daughter, in the name of Jesus, take, daughter. Take. Take that blessing. Every blessing, every breakthrough. Ignatius, in Jesus' name, Take your portion. Take your portion. The Lord clothes you. Clothes you from head to toe. Strength, healing, prosperity, peace, joy, long life in health. In Jesus' name, daughter, take your portion. Take your portion. Daughter, in Jesus' name, take that. In the name of Jesus, take it, take it, take, take. In Jesus' name, daughter, take your blessing, daughter. Take, take, receive, yes, receive. In the name of Jesus, take your portion, daughter. two hands for Jesus. Church, are we blessed today? Last week, the report, let me take your seat, the report I received from Teshi was that, oh, even though the service was one hour, it looked like six hours to them. They said they were so filled, they received everything, they had everything. May you also receive everything today. In Jesus' name. We will give our, our brother, uh, Eric, some before we take our second offering and close, we'll give him some. Um, I don't know how many minutes. He, 
that he may, he may give his uh, testimony of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Say, clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. We stand here to give a big thank you to Jesus, our Lord. September nineteen. God God graciously gave admission to our son Gilbert to Polytechnic Kofodia. December he complained of sickness. But the 18th of the month, God dropped my spirit that he should come home. my friend Catherine last exam he had to write his life paper on the 22nd of December. He wrote the paper on the 22nd of December. The father called him that he should come home. So he came back on the 23rd. He came back on the 23rd. He came back on the 23rd. When he came back, we saw that he was able to walk, but he was so weak he could hardly walk. He took him to the hospital. Doctors gave him some medications. And he said he had become anemic. He had run, but, he had run short of blood. But they couldn't tell, they couldn't identify where the blood had gone to. He did all the tests, they couldn't identify what was causing the anemia. And the government hospital equipment into a private lab. So he decided to go to a private hospital. And he had to call a say, Adam Lab. Almost tested on almost say, the BBR, a yoke, only a DBR with him, but the Mujan is looking for baby. They, did, they still did not identify the cause of the anemia. Stay, he didn't say called Snit Hospital. Took him back to Snit. Doctor Nick can say or shot to Moja and T or Bajana to her ah or the Moja be seen so. So the doctor decided that he would admit him to give him blood transfusion. And I'm catching my wife says, Oh to me, eh who baby or mess ma mojana shot to no S D R and yet me man in to her. They said that if they were not able, if they are not able to tell where what was causing the anemia, then he will not allow them to admit it. It is for no lab test, baby. I'm the better pastor. It's a series of lab tests. And the pastor catcher said, "One year kidney problem, and now the Johnson so mixing with more than mixing with the Johnson." So I showed the lab test to the to our pastor. That is me, and it looked like. He had some, something wrong with the kidneys. And he passed some Yishiano on Sunday. I'm not in lockdown. Yishiano on Sunday. So we met here, whereas we were all locked down. We we unlocked ourselves and came here. The Obon Paye man he had deliverance. We pray for him and took him through deliverance. And our catcher said, "Okay, you have found quite different hospital. Aye, Ghana Port Authority new hospital. We must come to three home." So during the deliverance, what happened? So I'm more in love, be brave. You know that I'm not even a see yet. You're born pie man, or bad. Oh, born pie man. Uh-huh. Then they see it. What came out of? Ah, that's just a attack. No, every school more. Yes, we got to know that 
He was attacked by schoolmates, some schoolmates in the school who didn't like him. They just attacked him and um, two of them. Yeah. They mentioned their name yeah. here and he, he knows them. Yeah. One of them pretended to be his friend. When, as soon as he got to Cape Poly, this person got close to him, pretended to be his friend. But he was not, or he's not a believer. And when he invited him to church, he said he, will not, he won't go. As for he and church, he don't go. So he and some other guy, two, two young men, the deliver came out that they were the one responsible for the problem that he was going through. And the pastor commanded one say, or mon fa bibi or mo yeni muja or mono mina no bunyai. And we cast them out in the name of Jesus. And I'll cast a panic hospital, new hospital. The acquire lamb or not lamb lady my pastor and patch as a kidna na winyano. A jai. So now so they went for a federal test and the test showed that now there was no problem with the kidney anymore. Meanwhile, his blood level was already was down already. In fact, General Hospital Christian, but only Muslim. But the way a Yakupon is in my Numadumono or my blood will be added by. Amen. So they got a blood from 37 military hospital. Tiadiba or Moody Sinus. And the Yakupon Adam, who was a gay betty Jinaha, not a Yamun Pabo, and in Yamiadum Tinujina. Tiadiba or Massa and Yadamas. So seeing the best standing here this morning. It's all through the grace and the mercy of God. And that's why they've come to testify, to give the glory to God. Amen. Can you turn, all of three of you turn around? Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. First and foremost, for your son Gilbert. His name is Gilbert Afro. Lord, you know him. He hears your voice and he follows you. And you will not allow anyone to snatch him out of your hand because you are giving him eternal life already. And I pray for father and mother. Lord, you heal your son completely. Lord, complete his healing. It's a miracle that we see him here. See him standing here this one, the way he is. Had it not been you, you have died months ago. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, once again, I make intercession for him. The Lord will bring your healing anointing afresh upon him. Make him completely well. From the crown of his head to the soul's under his Lord, make him, complete, make him completely well. In the name of Jesus. Gilbert, take. Take your healing. 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 Holy Spirit, empower the parents. Make their joy full in you. Give them your peace. 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 In the name of Jesus. Take. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we blessed today? Let's take our second offerings now.
Shall we lift up our offerings unto the Lord? Shall I say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word which I have received today. Lord, I lift up this my offering unto you. Lord, it is holy. Lord, it is holy. Therefore, receive it from the hand of your servant. Bless me. Bless my household. Bless my loved ones. Bless everything that is dear to my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. told that COVID-19 has come to stay. And it, it, I don't think it's going to be, but God will protect us. To become like malaria, you get it, it goes away, you will not die. Um, so maybe once a month or every quarter, or once every two months, we take an offering for the music and the ocean department. Take an offering for them. Just to keep their, their coffee. But before we do that, they have to give account we we'll, uh, we'll have some auditors to check the account. So we we'll appoint, uh, <laughs> we'll appoint some auditors to audit the accounts first. Then when they bring back the report, then we start it. So do you agree with me? So uh, who shall be the auditors for us? Who and who? Any auditors? Anybody want the audit, auditor to audit the account? Who? Okay, Pastor Yemo, somebody appointed Pastor Yemo. And then we need two or three auditors. And then I say, uh, you are pointing at one person, you are pointing at two. But you are not pointing at yourself. <laughs> you are allowed to point out only one person. So do you accept? Do you are, for them, do you accept? And then I say, do you accept? One more, we need one, one, one lady. We need my sister to join them. God bless you. God bless you. So, audit the accounts and then if the accounts is clean, then we will we'll, we'll start doing that. Amen. Amen. Uh, set out your hand in front of you. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for having been with us and having glorified your name in our midst. We know that, Lord, we are not living here the same as we came. We are living here mightily blessed. Those who are not able to come for one reason or the other, the mothers who have little children, Lord, make a way for them also to be with us. That they may not be spiritually starved, but they should be spiritually filled. Go with each and every one of us. 
Let it, this coming week, this week, be a week of victory, a week of fulfillment and success, peace and joy. Bring us together on Tuesday night for a teaching service. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this, our prayer. Now, the grace and the goodness. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our lives. And we are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. And may God be with all of you.